the booth with Scott and Chris. Guys, we just talked about Halo Reach. Have to mention, we have a D stream going on this week, and you guys can watch raw gameplay from one of our Halo Reach feature stations. Pretty cool stuff. Those guys put it together last minute. Thank you. Hats off to the production team. But guys, now it's time to talk about Halo 3. And this is one of the most important tournaments for some of our bubble teams. We'll get to that later. But right now, we need to talk about what we saw in Raleigh. And we got to talk about Final Boss and Instinct here. After Instinct won our first two events, Final Boss came back. They were able to take down Instinct in the championships after winning the winner's bracket finals. And this team looks like a whole new FB. They were clicking on all cylinders. These guys seem to be on top of their game. They finished first. They still have the second seed. Instinct still our number one team in the league. They have two wins so far this season. And these guys are really the team to beat, in my opinion, in the top half of the bracket. These guys were crushing at the land. And after amazing performances all season long, these guys have secured enough points to earn themselves a spot in Dallas. But they're not the only team securing a spot in Dallas at our championships in a couple weeks here. Scott, who else are we going to be seeing there? You know, you got to look at status quo for this, Chris. The first event, they come out and they take fourth, and we question their consistency. Because in the past, the tournament pressure gets to them. But you know what? They come out the next two events, and then they finish fourth and fourth. Now, this shows one thing to me. This team is used to the tournaments, and they can only get better from here. If with preparation, this team can easily come out and win. When you look at Enable, he was the most positive player coming out of our second event for a reason. The kid's very talented. But then you have to look at our fourth seed as triggers down. This team lost round one at our last event and then came back to win. They are the comeback kids. They are the new carbon of 06, Chris. This team is very impressive, and they are the most prepared team coming into this event. Yeah, lots of props to Triggers Down. Those guys putting in plenty of time in between events. Lots of lands going on there. Have to say I was at the 16 land earlier last weekend, actually, and that team is going to be the team to watch this weekend, Chris. But we got to talk about our fifth and sixth seeded teams. Yeah, well, Chris, we got to look at the fifth seeded team, Believe the Hype. And we also have to look at the sixth seeded team, Dynasty. Believe the Hype coming off a sixth place finish in Raleigh, and Dynasty coming off a seventh place finish. Believe the Hype for this tournament picked up Tazoxic, an incredibly talented individual player who definitely could take them to the next level. But at the same time, Dynasty didn't do too shabby either. They picked up the player in Hines, who I personally voted for as the 2009 best overall player in the game. All right, so we have Believe the Hype, Dynasty. They're coming in with the fifth and sixth seats. That is going to put a ton of pressure on our seventh through 11 seeded teams. Those are going to be our bubble teams. Let's actually bring up the bubble team graphic we have here. Now, take a look at this, guys. This is the minimum points these teams can have after our DC event, taking into account for our rolling rank point system. Right now, you'll see that Carbon will be at seven, straight rip and eight. Warriors on the bubble. They're there. The team closest to fitting into the top eight. They're at nine. Purgatory 10. Heaven Earth at 11. And guys, at the 16 land, I actually had a chance to talk to some of our pros and get their predictions to see which two teams they thought would advance to our Dallas championships. Check it out. Chig, which two bubble teams will advance to the Dallas championships? Carbon, us, and straight. All right, Carbon, Hi straight. I would like to say straight and... Hmm. I'll say carbon. Straight and carbon. Carbon and straight for sure. Done. Um, I say carbon and straight. Carbon straight again. Straight and warriors. Straight and warriors. We got to ambush the guy who does all the switching at the events. Genius. I've got to say warriors, and I think it's going to be a battle between carbon and straight. Warriors definite, carbon and straight on the bubble. Mrs. P, which bubble teams will advance to the Dallas championships? Well, um, I'm going to have to say, what's the question? Which bubble teams will advance to the Dallas championship? Bubble team? Yeah, the bubble teams. Who are they? <laughs> Saper, we need to know which two bubble teams will advance to the Dallas championships. Uh, probably Carbon and Warriors. Fear? Uh, definitely Carbon. Walshy? Carbon and straight. SK? Carbon. Just Carbon. Done. Diesel, we need to know which two bubble teams will advance to the Dallas Championships. <laughs> Sounds like heaven and earth to me. <laughs> All right, so I have to give a big shout out to the Pinocchios. Thank you for the hospitality and the land network. Had an incredible time at the 16 land. Got to interview a dog. Hey. 
freaking good time. But anyway, guys, that's the pros predictions, but I want to hear it from you. Let's talk about some of the biggest bubble team matches going down this weekend, and we got to start it off here. We have Dynasty facing off against Purgatory tonight, winner's bracket round two. What do you guys expect to see in this matchup? Who are you taking here? Uh, I'm going to have to take Dynasty for this matchup. Dynasty got two players in APG and Destin who are incredibly talented individual players. APG himself charges a lot, but it gets away a lot and gets a lot of kills. And Destin, really, is going to be their X factor. When this kid's on fire, they're going to win. If he's not playing too well, they're going to have a tough time winning and they might lose. Yeah, you know, Destin really impressed me at the land. I was talking to Ogre 2, actually, Chris, and he was telling me, come watch this kid. From across the room, he was pointing to me, Pucky, come watch this kid. Destin, one of the most naturally talented players at the 16 land. Apparently, he doesn't play nearly as much as the other kids, but it didn't show at the land. He is nasty. Look out for him. He'll be doing work for Dynasty. And Scott, I know you like APG and Destin, but you're a bigger fan of the other two guys on this lineup. You know, I have to give it to Hines. I've always been a Hines fan since last year when he was on Triggers Down. He was the 2009 best overall player. You voted him for a reason. The kid has extreme talent. Very rarely do you ever see him put himself in a bad position. And he may not be always be getting the fame, but he's doing the right thing for his team. And that's what matters at the end of the day. And then, you know, I got to look at my mini me. I got to look at Clutch. He's my new, he's the new trash talker on the circuit. I love this guy. He's a very, he's a great leader. And I just like how he plays. You know, Clutch getting his team fired up. He was definitely talking trash at the land. Hopefully we'll hear some of that this weekend. So you guys both picking Dynasty over Purgatory tonight? Yes. yes. All right, agreeing with the bracket show. Smart guys. Well, guys, <laughs> that takes us to another matchup here. Our Big matchup here on the bubble teams. We have Carbon facing off against Heaven and Earth later tonight on the Doritos Friday Night Kickoff. What are you guys expecting to see here? Chris, starting with you, what is Carbon going to need to do to win? Well, Carbon's really going to need to play extremely well here. Uh, I'm going to look for actually SK and uh, Walshy to step up finally. They seem to have very off tournaments the last few tournaments. But uh, with he oh God. And yep. then with Heaven and Earth, you know, you got to look at strong side and cipher right now. These two guys together, are they're the, they're the glue of this team. And then with Anarchy, you have to look at his leadership. If this is his time, he is possibly not going to a, a national championship, and he's not placed outside of the top three since I've been on the league with him. You know, Heaven and Earth, definitely going to be a scary team to watch here. And Chris, sorry to cut you off earlier. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. Can we bring up the Carbon B-roll? Do it one more time. And uh, Scott, why don't you take this one? Well, with looking at this Carbon squad, they are very prepared for this event. They have two teams. They've had two lands. And Chig is playing out of his mind. Chig and Soldier, both, they got second at the 2009 National Championship. Don't forget that. These guys know what it takes to win. And then you have Walshy, Mr. Clutch himself. This guy wins national championships. There's no way he's not going to show up to this event and not play. He is going to make it into the top eight. Now, this is kind of a big deal here, guys. Walshy, Carbon, having a chance of not making it to Dallas. You think they're going to step up tonight? Uh, I expect them to step up. I think Walshy, Walshy's never, I don't think, placed out of the top eight. Or if he has, it's been very rarely. And he's definitely a big time player. When it counts, he's usually at his best. Now, guys, when we brought up the bubble team graphic earlier, we showed you that straight ripping Warriors right now are most likely to be duking it out for that eighth spot. And it just so happens that they meet up tonight on our Friday night kickoff, match number one. We got to talk about this one. Maybe the most important match of the entire tournament, straight ripping, taking on Warriors here. And, you know, we got to start with this one with you, Chris. I know you're going with straight ripping on this oh, one. Oh, I'm definitely going with straight ripping. And when looking at straight, you're going to see T-squared. He's actually become a dominant player in the last month. Actually, with this team taking over the main Slayer role, he's really impressed, especially at the 16-player land. But for me, personally, I'm looking for Ghost Ayami to really become the glue for this team. And he's really going to be the, the person that steps up and kind of brings this team together, does the dirty work, and does what the team needs. And then you have Defy, AKA Mr. Consistency. I mean, this guy will never lose a game for you, and he can always win a game. And then you have Nated, the beast, the monster, the freak, whatever you want to call him, the kid's plain sick. And he's definitely the playmaker on this team. Look for him to have a sick tournament. Now, something very interesting about Nated here, at the 16 land, he was playing anywhere from three to five to seven to 10 sensitivity. <laughs> and let me tell you, why Watching him on 10 sensitivity, I felt like I was going to get sick. I told him, you are not allowed to play at 10. Otherwise, I can't show your screen the entire tournament. 
Hopefully he tunes it down to about a seven. But even at seven, his grenades are still amazing. Naded is gonna be the player to watch, in my opinion, here for straight ripping. But Scott, I know you're looking up for the young guys. You're pulling for the Warriors in this matchup. You know, I have to give it to Warriors. They've had back-to-back -back fifth place finishes. You see right now, they beat Triggers down round one and they finished fifth. This team is extremely consistent. Robbie B and Snakebite together are extremely talented players. Robbie B had an, a stellar performance versus Triggers Down round one. I think he, I want to say he went on an 8-0 run versus Triggers Down being down to win him that game. This team together has proved that they are the real deal, and that's how they got the land at the Red Bull Station versus Carbon and Status Quo. Yeah, the Warriors being invited out to California with the land against Status Quo and Carbon, you know, they looked pretty impressive. Scott, you and I are watching that all weekend long. DMAC was actually there, and he told me, Warriors, they're no joke. Look out for them. They have nothing to lose going into tonight's matchup, guys. Straight ripping everything to prove here. You think they're going to pull it out, or you think Warriors going to be able to sneak a, in another upset? You know, it's, it's always an advantage being the underdog. We were always the underdog in the 06 season until the end, and you just have that edge. Teams will overlook you no matter what your seed is. If you're two and you're going against the one seed, they are going to overlook you because they say, well, you know, we're the best team for a reason. They can't beat us. So you always have that advantage. But straight ripping, T-squared is the most dedicated player. He hasn't played a single game of reach yet. He's only played Halo 3, and that proves that he's dedicated and he does not not want to go to the championship. Walshy and T-Squared, the legends, the old school veterans trying to make a stand here this week and cannot wait for the Doritos Friday night kickoff. Guys, that's coming on at nine o'clock. But right now, we're gonna head to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll be back with our Hot Pockets top eight.